Welcome back. It is Desert Rose here. Good evening, good day, wherever you may be. And today's topic is the disciples of Jesus. So we know Jesus had 12 disciples. And we also know that he trained them up in order for him For them to be able to keep going after Jesus died and then got resurrected. But in actual fact the disciples were quite important. They weren't just picked there then and there on the spot every time Jesus went past someone and be like, Oh yeah, come with me. It was always willed by God before time God had already planned for these disciples to be there with Jesus. God just led Jesus to where each of these people were and asked them to come along and they did. And then they kind of became a big family. I know Jesus had other family, you know, Mary and Joseph and he had brothers and sisters. But because he was with these people like 24-7, he was training them, teaching them, showing them different things, and the miracles and the way to do things, they all became a family. But they also had a role. They had a role in order to keep things going after Jesus left them. Now they didn't always know Jesus was going to leave them. Jesus told them close to the time that he was going to leave them. They didn't quite understand. But he also felt at the same time, you know, they were ready. Um, he want, he asked God to help the, the his disciples to carry on afterwards. But the whole time he was training them because he knew, Jesus knew himself that he wouldn't be there for long. So he needed them. So he was teaching them different things. Matthew 10, 1, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every kind of disease and every kind of sickness. So he was giving him authority while they were, he was training them. He was teaching them and doing these things himself. In order to, when he left, they could do that. He was also telling them that they needed to um, baptize everyone as well. Like, it was important that um, you know, to able to bring God, uh, the people to God, to the kingdom, you have to be baptized. You have to, you know, have, have a second birth. So Jesus commissioned his disciples to be the witnesses. He said, go therefore to make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. I am with you always, even to the end of age. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. So he was giving clear instructions so the disciples would go on afterwards to do these things. And plus, you know, they already wrote the books in, in the Bible. So, you know, they had very big roles and it was very important for them to do this. So Jesus was constantly teaching them, training them up in order to um, keep going when he was gone. And then, you know, then with all of what they were teaching, then Jesus would not be forgotten. It wouldn't be just like, Oh, yeah, back in such and such a time, there was a guy called Jesus, and, you know, he did that, but then everyone kind of forgot around him. He didn't want that. He didn't want to be forgotten because he needed people to able to come to him so that they were able to go to him after their time on earth. So he had trained up these disciples in order to keep, you know, Jesus basically alive in people. 
So it's important that we listen to the scriptures because Jesus worked very hard with his disciples. You know, Luke 6.13, And when the day came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them, in whom he also named as his apostles. He really needed these people. They were actually chosen and picked out out of everyone in that time to do this because that Jesus and God knew that they would be able to fulfill these roles. So it was important that Jesus had to give them all of the training. He also said to them, you know, in Mark eight thirty four, and he summoned the crowd of his with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. So his disciples also had to do that. I know Jesus was saying there that he was telling everyone in the crowd, but his disciples actually had to do that in order to follow him. It was important that everyone dropped what they were doing to follow Jesus. Just like, you know, there was everyone had all different roles. You know, there were fishermen and doctors and, you know, tax collectors and so on. Everyone had different roles, so they had to give up what they knew in order to follow Jesus, so Jesus could train them up. You know, his disciples were there with him all the time. Matthew 5, 1, when Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. So they all became kind of like a family. His disciples were there for him at every moment. And so, you know, it was important that they learned every little detail in order to be like, go and bring people back to the kingdom. So Jesus had a big role, but after they left, The disciples had to take on that role that Jesus was doing with them in order for them to carry on to bring all the people in. So they, it wasn't just a small thing. It wasn't just Jesus picking and choosing these people because he wanted some mates. These were important people. I'm not saying they're above Jesus or anything like that. They were important for the roles that they were to carry out. That They were actually chosen out of all the people. They were chosen. They were the right people for the right job. So, you know, um, I mean, yes, they got in trouble. They were not always perfect people. Matthew twenty six forty five. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Are you sleeping and resting? Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. This is when Judas Iscariot actually went and told the Romans, you know, where Jesus was. Go and get him arrested. I want my pay. Jesus needed his family, his disciples. To be there with them. Be ready. Be ready for what is next. You know, because he he formed these relationships with them. But he wanted to see what was going to happen next. He didn't want them sleeping on the job. He needed them to be awake and alert to see what was happening. To prove that this, what he had been talking about, especially at the Last Supper, what was about to happen... And what they really needed to carry on after he left. Like it was very important that they were on their guard all the time. So disciples are important. People just think, oh yeah, they're just people. But, you know, we're just people and we're still just as important to God as 
you know, any other person. But these guys had a role. They had an important role in order to help us today carry on what Jesus wanted us to do. So he needed them after he laid out the foundation of what their roles were, what they were to do, and then they carried it on. It was just all a flow-on effect, and they created their books and got them together to make the scriptures because it was all of Jesus' training. So they got trained up. They were told to do what they needed to do. And, you know, they were helping all sorts of people because Jesus had showed them and he was showing them miracle after miracle. But he also said, you can do this in my name as well. Because, you know, he he trusted his disciples. He trusted that they were going to do their jobs. He didn't doubt in them at all because he'd put in so much into them, so much training that he knew that they could do their job. He didn't want to leave them though. He was close to them. They were his family. But they, he had to go. He had to leave that trust that they were going to carry on. And that's why he was saying that he, when he left, he was going to send back a gift of the Holy Spirit. By saying that he would never leave them. You know, he doesn't leave us today either. He would never ever leave you. Just like he never left. He may have physically gone, you know, to heaven to be with the Father. To reunite with his Father. Have a big old, you know, hug time. Or whatever. But he got the Holy Spirit sent down so that we are able to carry on the roles as the disciples carried on after Jesus left. Because, you know, you can't just put into, he can't just put all into this work and expect that, you know, it'd be all fine and dandy and it will carry on. No, he had to actually keep putting into it even after he left and help his disciples keep moving forward, keep doing what they needed to do. So the, the, the disciples actually had a lot of help still afterwards. They may have not had Jesus physically there, but they still had the Holy Spirit, but they knew what to do because Jesus had trained them up. So they were important for that time as well because there would have been a lot of people grieving and then that transition of losing Jesus and then being left with the disciples. The disciples had to pick up that role. They had to pick up everything and carry it on because, you know, there would have been a lot of people mourning. There were a lot of people upset, but then after that as well, you know, you didn't want them just to completely forget about it just because Jesus had passed away. Jesus still needed things to be happening. They still needed to keep going. So, he did that. He gave them what they needed. And he still is giving what people need today. But they did that. They rose people from the dead. They healed, they removed spirits, they gave peace and comfort to people, you know, they were just there, they just did exactly what Jesus did, but except it wasn't Jesus, but they were just as good, you know, because it was Jesus that put into them, so, you know, it's basically Jesus flowing out of them. So when you read the scriptures, read the books of the Bible from these disciples, just think of, you know, how much they went through as well. I mean, they weren't the one on the cross, I'm not saying that, but they did the training. They watched Jesus die on that cross. 
and they would have been mourning too, but they got up and carried on in order for, you know, Jesus' words to reach to us today. They were dedicated to Jesus. They were dedicated, so they wanted to carry it on. And yes, they were being obedient to God at the same time. But they knew they just had to just keep carrying on. So trust their words. Believe them. Believe that God gave them the words in order for us to know today. So they had very important roles. So don't just dismiss them or go past their books in the Bible. Actually pick it up. Read it understand it through the Holy Spirit obviously and see what they went through you know it gives accounts of what they saw Jesus to um, then what they did it gives real life accounts so always acknowledge their words take it in and remember that you know they had hard times too, you know, today you might have hard times and you go through spiritual challenges, they did too. Even though they had Jesus with them, they still had to go through all their stuff as well in order to help you today. So don't just dismiss the disciples as just people that hang out with Jesus, they were important, they had their role, Jesus gave them their instruction. Jesus gave them what they needed in resources within the Holy Spirit, within all their training. So acknowledge them. I'm not saying put them above God or Jesus. Just acknowledge them because, you know, they were everyday people like us. They did everyday roles. I mean, things might be slightly different today to what they were in that time. But they still had jobs. They still had to provide for their families. They had to still do this and that and the next thing. And then Jesus came along and took them from their jobs and said, I will look after you. I'll make sure you still get what you need. And he did. He took care of his disciples because they were his family. Just like he's going to take care of you. So the disciples actually believed him like you should believe Jesus too because they did they dropped everything and left their houses their homes their families their jobs their everything in order for them to carry on what Jesus wanted them to do so just trust what they say in the scriptures Believe them. Believe that, you know, Jesus trusted them. So you should too, in a way, in a sense that what they're saying in the scriptures is absolutely correct. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And share if you want. And I still doing free prophetic words and if you are led to, to donate into this channel link is in description and I'll see you next time bye